What is up, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about the perfect tool bag setup for an apprentice electrician. Now, I'm going to go through these things day by day to show you kind of what you should expect to have on your first day and also kind of walk you through the version of that tool that I like and what I've found to be useful, kind of share some of my experience with you guys. And at the end, I'll show you guys some of the little things that I keep that really helped me be super productive, especially when I wasn't as experienced, they kind of gave me the edge and helped me to be more successful. Now, the first thing you're gonna need, it's a tool bag. You're gonna have to have some way to carry your stuff. Now, I'm gonna mention my favorite versions of this. Some of them are a little bit more pricey. You can get whatever version of them that you would like, whatever works for you. This is the Vito Pro Pack TP6B. I love this bag. It's a fantastic open bag, super cool. It's got a little hook, holds all my tools. I love it. The things that I wouldn't show up without, number one, I've got to say is a tape measure. This is like the number one thing. Now, what you're really looking for in a tape measure, you want to have something that's magnetic, 25 foot, and you want it to be strong. I like the Milwaukee Stud. It's great. I also have a Stanley Fat Max um, and a couple others that I've tried. This has been my favorite though. And for you electricians, you guys wanna have writing on the bottom as well. Make sure that that's on there because you're gonna end up measuring over your head and it's like, you just can't flip it around. So get a tape measure that has that. I also like this clip a lot better, which is one of the reasons why I have this one. Next up, the two second most important things are a pencil and a Sharpie. You can have a carpenter's pencil, you can have a regular pencil, it doesn't matter. Have them easily accessible as well as a notepad because there is going to be so many things. This is the majority of what we do, okay? We measure and we write on things. Like that is in order to get set up, you have to be able to do those two things. Have those things ready. When your journeyman yells something out, take notes, write down measurements, write down your stuff. You'll end up marking pipe or doing whatever you do with this pen or the Sharpie. Next up on the list, we have a level. I like this one from Klein a lot. For those of you who are going into commercial work, you guys are going to want to get something that has 30 degrees, 45, and obviously your 90 and your zero degrees. Those are very important for pipe. When you bend pipe, if you're in commercial work, you'll end up bending pipe and it's great. The magnets on this are insanely strong. I mean, they are crazy so this is the six inch version i will leave a link to all of this stuff in the description next up on this little side here we've got a knife this is also a day one thing this is my favorite utility knife it's from fiskers you can have a utility knife have a fixed blade have whatever you would like but you need to have a knife because you're going to end up cutting open a box you're going to end up needing to cut something open and so this one here from fiskers super smooth People like the Milwaukee Fastbacks a lot as well. This one's at Lowe's, super affordable, but this is a day one item. You need to be able to open whatever you need to be able to open, okay? You should pretty much always have a knife on you anyway. Next up on the list is the voltage detector. It's This one here is from Fleur. I really like this one. It's also got a flashlight and uh, it also does AC and DC voltage. That doesn't matter. You just need something that can detect if there's voltage there or not. I have a fluke one as well. I like the fluke one. Uh, Klein makes them as well. But this is basically just gonna tell you if something's live or not. They're not always super trustworthy. You can't rely on them all the time. Look to your journeymen to be safe. They will help you out to figure out when you can use this and when you shouldn't, when you can't trust it because there are times they're not always the most accurate tools. So make sure you check with your journeyman. Day one as well, screwdrivers. These screwdrivers here are from Weira. I like these a lot. I like the individual screwdrivers so much better. A lot of people like the five in one or the 11 in one from Klein. You go do that if you'd like to. It will save you from having to buy you know, a, a set of screwdrivers and you'll just buy one. I don't care for them. I really like the smaller shafts. That's up to you guys. See what the guys around you like. Check out their workflow. The 11 in one's like $10. These, a set of these is like 30 uh, and you get all the sizes that you'll need for any type of screwdriver. But I do love these. You don't have to get insulated tools most people here in America do not get insulated tools. However, I myself like to have that insulation. Some guys will give you crap for it. They'll mess with you about it. But honestly, at the end of the day, it's kind of like, who cares? Um, but these these screwdrivers from Weira, if you're looking for a good screwdriver brand, this right here is the one. Okay, so there's two tools left in the day one section. Things that I would definitely try to have the first day that I was working. But this 
set right here. This is a pair of wire strippers and these are from Knipex. I like this set a lot. Pliers are one of the things that I say you wanna spend your money on. You wanna have good pliers, reliable pliers. However, I will tell you that these wire strippers are significantly more expensive than regular wire strippers. They cut a lot better. I like the functionality of them better. A pair of wire strippers from Lowe's or Home Depot, 10 to $15 max. These, I believe, are 40. Eventually, you may want to go to these. I'm, I, I am a huge fan of Knipex pliers. And outside of wire strippers, I do say you, you need to just spend the money because you're going to end up spending somewhere between $20 to $40 for a pair of the things coming up. This is the one thing where I'll say, especially if it's your first day, you might want to go for the cheaper end. Last tool on the first day list. These are a pair of water pump pliers or channel locks as we call them here in America. These are from Knipex. I love this set of pliers. These are another one that are significantly more expensive than the channel lock brand. These are worth the money. However, if you're on a budget, go ahead, go get the channel lock ones, but you're going to need a set similar to this. They don't have to have the push button. I really like the push button. It's kind of the thing that sells me on these and the grip, but you'll use these to turn pipe. You'll use these to turn nuts and bolts and different things. Just an extra set of hands that you will never be able to grab things as hard as these can and get this kind of leverage. So these are a day one tool and that ends the list of day one things. We're gonna go on, go over the few things, show you guys the versions that I like, show you guys some of those tricks that I've learned along the way. So first up, we have the electrician's plier. Yes, the linemen's. These things here, you'll use these a ton. They're super, super important. I love this pair here from Knipex. They cut so amazing. They come so smooth. For those of you who buy cheap pliers, you guys are gonna find out real soon that your pliers will not come like this. The Knipex will. Now the clients, they won't come like that. You'll have to break them in. I love this pair from Knipex. This is the VDE version. You don't need the VDE version, but the handle's so comfortable if you've never tried them. This is the version that I like of these. You'll end up using these to twist wires, to cut wires. They have a cutting jaw right here in the middle. And then up top, there's a serrated jaw. Very thick, very, very handy. And you can hit stuff with this. You'll use this as a hammer potentially more than you'll use anything else as a hammer. Right after that, Diagonal cutters. I love these from Knipex. They're the 10 inch pair. They give you a lot of leverage. They're super, super long. A lot of them will be eight inch diagonal cutters. That's what you'll see from most companies and from Knipex as well. I like this 10 inch VDE version. They also have angled heads, which I like the angled heads. However, they don't make the angled heads for a 10 inch version. So get the angled heads if you're not gonna get the 10 inch version. Now. Again, same thing with the VDE handles, super comfortable, I love them. You'll end up using these to do all kinds of stuff because they are a straight jaw and the cut they cut all the way up to the end. So that'll give you a flush cut when you need to. You don't have to worry about the rest of the jaw getting in the way for what you're cutting. Next on the list, we have this beater screwdriver. This one here is from Weira. I love this one. There is actually not another version of this that I would suggest you get. It's got the metal cap on the end. I'll leave the link in the description to the size of this one, but I've never found a better beater screwdriver and it's very, very affordable. I think this one is $10. You're gonna use this all the time. You'll use this to beat out boxes. You'll use this to you know, knock stuff into place. You will use this to pry. This is actually considered a chisel driver. Most of the time we call them beater screwdrivers because they're screwdrivers that we just beat on. This one's meant to do it. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. It's got a little shank here in case you wanna put a plier, set of pliers on it, get some torque on it. This one here is not something that I would get any other version of, especially because the cost of it is so affordable. Then next up on the list, we have this set here of Knipex Cobras. It's a second pair because whatever size you get, which I suggest the 10 inch pair, then you're gonna need a second pair to turn pipe, to do all those things. You hold the pipe with one of them and you turn with the other you'll always need that you'll always end up needing two the first day just one pair but eventually you're going to need a second pair next up is a nut driver this one here is from klein it's got a bunch of different sizes it is seven seven and one so uh, it's got a hollow shaft and it's magnetic those are two qualities that are fantastic that you're going to need for running bolts up onto threads and it just flips around pulls out you flip all these bits around, gives you seven different sizes. Some of them will be on the 11 and one if you get that, but not all of them. This has the larger sizes, the 9 16 7 16 and half inch that you're gonna use frequently, especially if you're in commercial work. And then 
this is a ratchet obviously you're going to end up needing some sockets as well i would do the deep well sockets those will last you for forever do three eighths eventually you'll end up getting all the sizes you want and need everything else like that just get a ratchet it'll last you for forever and then this is the style of pliers wrench that i like this is what i use as an adjustable wrench it's the pliers wrench from knipex i don't even own an adjustable wrench because of these i love these things so much they are so much more effective because you don't have to just turn the little dial like you would on an adjustable wrench you can just set it with the push button again these are more expensive an adjustable wrench is dirt cheap so this is the version of that that I like, but that is what will get you through most of the time. And then on this side here, I've got this Milwaukee Impact. It's a notable mention. Power tools are something that is expensive. You're gonna end up needing to figure out what your company expects you to have and what you are expected to provide. But an impact and a drill are two very notable items. I really like the Milwaukee platform fuel you're professional, you need the professional line of tools, especially for the cost and how much easier it'll make your life. So just keep that in mind. I did do a video over power tools. So if you're interested, go ahead, head up here, watch that video that goes over power tools. Or if you are interested in becoming an electrician, you're not 100% sure yet, go ahead and head up to this corner. I did a whole playlist on how to become an apprentice electrician and what that's like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, it's all for his glory. I'll see you guys on the next one.